Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokender Kumar and today I'm going to talk about Google Scholar. What are the different benefits of Google Scholar and how you can use Google Scholar and improve your research profile. I will discuss everything in detail and I have a short tutorial on that one that will help you to understand Google Scholar. I have one request to make if you are new to the channel please subscribe to the channel and if you like the video please press the like button. Google Scholar is an amazing website that keeps a good track of your all of your articles and it provides you all the details about the citation of your articles. Citations in science are really important. Citations determine how much uh, your research is being uh, read by other authors, how much it is being discussed by other people and uh, how much it is being uh, also mentioned in different articles. So citations are really important for uh, any researchers. So if you're doing research and you want to know how much citations you're getting every year or how much uh, citations you are getting for your one of your article. So Google Scholar is the platform that provides you uh, that particular opportunity. Citations are also important in terms of the research productivity of a particular researcher. If a uh, particular research have a lot of citation, that means the research is really important and it is being also performed in other labs and various researchers are working together on that particular topic. So citation are a really good indicator of your particular research productivity or they are also a very good indicator of whether what you are doing is important or not. Google Scholar provides you this particular information in a very organized way. It will give you a year-wise citation record of your article. It will also give you uh, article-wide citation record of your article. So that is very convenient to understand how much your research is being discussed or is being uh, cited by other articles. Second important thing that I'm going to discuss is Google Scholar gives you an opportunity to collaborate with other researchers. How? When you make a Google Scholar profile, you have to mention your particular research area. And when you click on that research area after making the profile, you can visit various researchers and Google Scholar will tell you that these are the researchers that are working in your area and uh, you can get all the information about their article and also what they are doing, which is great. So this is really important for any young researcher who is working in particular area and want to know uh, what peers uh, are doing, what kind of research they are doing. So that is why it also provides you a great opportunity to collaborate with the researcher in the same area. Another important point with the Google Scholar is it provides you a specific and targeted search. So if you type something in Google Scholar window, it will give you the articles that were published in that particular topic. Also, the case laws or review articles. Uh, it depends how you set your uh, search setting in the Google Scholar window, but it is more specific than general Google window. You search in Google Scholar and when you click on any result, Google Scholar provides you an opportunity to directly go to the website, uh, general website, and then you can download the particular article if you have access to that particular article and you can easily download that article. It also provides you an opportunity to make libraries. So you can make your own libraries of particular research topic inside the Google Scholar. Another thing that I like about Google Scholar is you can import citations in EndNote format uh, from Google Scholar on one click. When you visit a particular article, you will find there is a link that you can use to download that citation. And on one click, you can download the citation and import that citation in your Google document. One of the most important point of Google Scholar uh, is if you have a Google Scholar profile and if you are applying for a postdoctoral position or if you are applying for a research assistant position or faculty position, you, are, uh, uh, you have to give this particular information to your employer and Google Scholar is considered as a standard information about your, all the research that you have done. So they will visit your Google Scholar profile and they will try to find out what kind of research you are doing and Google Scholar provides you that information at one place. In my opinion, Google Scholar is a great website. You can get a lot of, lot of uh, information from Google Scholar. You can get citations and um, 
everything about the research article but I think there is a limitation Google Scholar is weak in providing the analytics about your research article for example if I want to know how many people uh, viewed my research article uh, you will not find that particular data in Google Scholar well, uh, but you can find all that information for example for your YouTube video right so uh, why not on the Google Scholar uh, it's still a question another uh, point is Google Scholar doesn't provide you a kind of a comment section where people can actually ask question about the particular research article so I think that is one of the limitation of Google Scholar it is less interactive but overall if you are trying to do research and uh, you you want to have all those citations and article at one place Google Scholar is great uh, website all right so that was uh, the major points about Google Scholar and now we will uh, we'll do a brief tutorial and I will introduce you about the various features that Google Scholar provides and what are the importance of all those features for example I will tell you uh, how a Google Scholar profile look like I will give an example of my own profile and I'll show you how many articles uh, I have in my Google Scholar profile also I will I will explain the citations as well as uh, how to download the articles so uh, please stay tuned till, an, till the end of the video and you will get all the information that you want. One quick request if you are new to the channel, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and you will get all the updates from uh, Basic Science series. And also if you like the video, please press the like button. So I'm going to show you how to use Google Scholar and what are the different features of Google Scholar. Alright, let's start. So I'm typing Google Scholar in the Google window and you can see uh, there is a Google Scholar tab here. Just click on that tab and you will see main frame of the Google Scholar window. And uh, what are these different components? Let me explain you. These three lines, if you click here, will show you different components of Google Scholar. Okay, we'll go one by one through these components. And then there is a shortcut tab for the My Profile. Specifically, if you want to check a profile of a particular professor or particular researcher, you can uh, click here or you want to visit your own profile as I'm logged in. I can click here and my library, my library shows me various research articles that I stored or I visited. Uh, and uh, this is the search window. It's like Google search window. You can type the name of the research article you can type the name of the researcher and uh, you can find articles as well as case laws all right uh, let's start from the my profile window when i'll click on the my profile window a google scholar will direct me to my profile as you can see this is uh, a google scholar a typical google scholar profile and where you can post a picture and you can post your name where you work what is your designation what is your research area this is important uh, for example in my case molecular microbiology is the research area so i posted that particular name here and what happens when you click on this one you will find different researchers that has the same area so it's really convenient for you to find uh, researchers that are working in your area right okay so now you can click here and uh, you can follow me or any other researchers and you will get updates when I'll post any research article. Okay. And now you can see here on the right side, you can see citations and I have 204 citation right now and uh, H index 6, I10 index 5. So all these are the factors that influence my research productivity h index is the measure of your citation so for example if i publish one article and it gets cited by other article so i get one citation right so slowly slowly my paper is going to get cited and i'm going to get more citations and my uh, h index code will go higher in this case you can see my first paper that i published in 2013 during my phd work uh, has been cited 93 times so that means that 93 different papers has uh, a citation of this particular paper mentioning uh, 
uh, whatever I have done in this particular paper. So that is why citations are really important uh, for any research scholar. They measure uh, the importance of the research that he is doing. It also measures that how much people are actually reading and citing his research. So he is considered as uh, he or she is considered as a prominent scientist in the research uh, particular research area. But anyways, so as you can see, there are different different articles. So uh, you can see the number of citations, right? And you can see the the year that they were published. And the this is the bar chart that shows you the number of citations that you're getting every year. So in 2019, uh, I have uh, less than 48 citations. In 2018, I have 48 citations. So you can actually see every year how many citations you are getting. It depends upon how many papers you published and further how many times they are getting cited. Here you can see add article groups, add articles, add article manually. So this is the tab where you can actually manually add articles. Although when you publish article, Google Scholar detects your article and suggests you whether you are the author of that article and immediately it adds up to your Google profile, which is great, right? So title. So in this, in this section, you can actually sort them on the basis of their title. So I, you can see the articles are being cited as uh, the alphabetical order, right? And if I click on this, so they will be again sorted on the basis of their citation. So it's a good practice that you sort the article on the basis of citation, since citation is the good measure of the research productivity. All right. Here you can see the co-author, list of the co-authors that uh, you published the paper with, right? And um, and these are all the articles. And when you click on particular article, it will show you another pop-up window where you can see all the details of that particular article, which is great. And further, if you click on the particular title it will direct you to the general website and you can you know download the article if the journal is accessible to your university or your institution you will get the article so you can read the article and you can download and save it and you can use the article for your research purposes so which is convenient which is great right and what else so if you go back so you will be at the same window and it also gives you the related articles if i click it here i will get all the articles that are similar to my article so i can see who is working on the same research area i can go through their research which is great okay what else so that was all about the particular article and this is pretty much about the google scholar profile if you are a researcher you need to have the google scholar profile because when you apply for any job, they ask you uh, your Google Scholar profile. Okay, so uh, now I'll go back and I can go to the library window. Library window is really interesting. It can it can show you different different libraries. If you have any library, I don't have right now, so you can make your own library, and it is really convenient. You have the articles um, that you want. Uh, in your library right so next thing is alerts so you can keep all those um, research in your profile researchers in your profile and whenever they post the article you will get the alert for those so uh, that means that how many researchers you are following in that particular research area next is the matrices this is really interesting it gives you the uh, H index of the different different journals so you can find out different journals uh, uh, which you want to uh, use for your publication or you want to select for your publication on the basis of their h5 index right so nature uh, according to the google scholar has the highest h5 index then you have Mm, science, Lancet, Chemical Reviews, Nature Communication. Then you have different different journal nuclear acid research. Basically, they they all have really high impact factor. Okay, so Google Scholar also provides you the these journals. As you can see, the plus one as uh, 
23 position and its um, score is 176. I want to show you that there are some articles that I have published in PLOS One and you can also access because PLOS One is uh, open access general. You can access the articles. If you go to my profile, uh, I can access my PLOS One journals. Recent one is this. If you go and visit to that website, PLOS One is really good in keeping track of the various things I'll show you later. So this is the plus one article. You can actually see the title and then list of the list of uh, the authors, abstract, introduction. Uh, we will make a separate win, uh, uh, video on the composition of a research article, right? Uh, so let me show you what additional feature plus one provides you. So if you go here, and uh, visit the particular website journal website here you can you can actually see it provides you the views that how many people actually viewed your article and uh, how many citations you have you can see there is uh, no citation it recently got published but you can see the views that how many people are viewing your research right so this is really important because uh, how you get a citation be, uh, is you need to share your research with other people so that they can know about your research and when they write article they will cite you uh, on the basis of what you have done but if you don't share your research with other researchers they are not going to get the knowledge of your research so your your paper is not going to be cited it's a simple um, mechanism of citation right so this is really important that uh, you share your article and uh, I think PLOS One provides you uh, features to share your articles. I can't find it right now, but yeah, you can actually see media coverage. So media coverage means if there is any media coverage, that means your uh, paper is being covered in news or in any other blog. So you can also let PLOS One know and uh, you can put all those information right there. Anyway, so, okay, so this is the different uh, window that is uh, NCBI window. We'll, we'll cover this one in different, in different video lecture, not for now. So we'll go back to the Google Scholar. So this is how, you know, you can click on the article, you can go to the general website, you can download all those articles. And this is really interesting. And it also gives you all the details. You know, if you have any pattern, for example, I have one pattern, I have two pattern. So one pattern, if you click on this pattern and uh, you go to uh, the title and you'll get the information of that pattern. And you can also download the PDF of that pattern from uh, the Google Scholar. Let me show you. If you click on any article, like, uh, sorry, if you type uh, any particular article, you will find this particular uh, search re results that will be provided uh, by Google Scholar. And uh, you see these two commas. This is site. This is really, really important. If you click on this one, it will give you the option to download the citation. You know, how convenient is that? Uh, if, you, if you are a user of EndNote, you will find it really convenient. So EndNote, you can click here. Also, you have a different option of uh, BibTech, uh, Lapman also, but I, I like EndNote. So if you click, you will get the citation. See how easily I got the citation when I click this one if I if you have an EndNote installed already it will direct you to this particular software and the download downloaded citation will be stored directly to the EndNote and then you can use that to actually cite into your research article in one click right and you can manage the citation so i will also make videos on how to use endnote and how to import citation how to change citation as per the general requirements so which is uh, extremely convenient because when your paper gets rejected from one journal you have to format it according to another journal all right so this is a uh, different different um, features of google scholar let me just go back and see whether 
I missed any other feature? Uh, I don't think so. This is all the basic stuff about Google Scholar and they uh, sometimes they also post some updates so that will be really convenient to find out if there is any updates on that one. Uh, you know, and Google Scholar is also providing you new article information on COVID-19 because researchers are doing a lot of research on this particular topic. So you can actually click directly and you can find what is the information in nature about COVID-19? What is the information in science about COVID-19? You can actually click and I can show you. Look, so I was directed to nature and nature has all the COVID-19 articles that you can visit, which is great. Fantastic. Okay. Now, if you go back and if you click on science and it will direct you to the science articles. Fantastic. So that was all about. I highly recommend you to actually make your Google Scholar profile and if you are a researcher and try to share the profile with other researchers so that they can read your uh, research and you can get more citation.